You're listening to The Dollop. This is a bi-weekly American history podcast. Now, each week, I, Dave Anthony, read a story from American history to my friend. Gareth Reynolds, who has no idea what the topic is going to be about. Is that it? Yeah, that's how the intro goes. Do we do more? No, that's it. Ow. No, yep, now you hit your hand. I hit my hit. hand. Just start the I music. I have a face. Start the music. No, we do this. Oh, that's before everything. Uh, our podcast this week is brought to you by Birdwell Beach Bridges. Summer's here, Gareth. Yeah. Close to it, right? Um, we're almost summer. It's summer. Is it summer? That's Fish close. Summer? Well, summer's, it's basically summer where I am. Sure. It's hot. Yeah. You ready for the beach, the pool? It doesn't just have to be summer, too. It's unemployment season. Lake? Yeah, I love a lake. Yeah, you love a lake. You're wondering what to wear this year in the lake? Sure. Forget about your flash in the pan trends and guesswork and get classic surf style from Birdwell. It'll look good year after year. You can just keep these babies. Never goes out of style. They're babies. They're ba- ba- babies. Uh, they are one of California's original surf shop board shorts. Sure. I wear board shorts when I go swimming. That's my part of my jam. Yeah, great. I know. Uh, Birdwell Beach. Bridges. Nobody needs your personal... In 1961, surf mom Carrie Birdwell Mann transformed her small Southern California home into a sewing room and store, launching Birdwell and creating one of California's first surf shops. That's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, Birdwell Britches is pure Southern California and classic surf style. With 56 plus years behind them, Birdwell Beach Britches are part of the fabric of the golden age Southern California surf culture, just like the Beach Boys, Hot Rods, and skateboarding. And dogs on skateboards. Dogs on skateboards. Yeah. Bur, uh, birdies are guaranteed for life by their Sa- Santa Ana factory. Every pair of Birdwell Beach britches are individually inspected to ensure the highest quality. I'm doing the inspecting of it. And covered in. And that's when they're on. And covered in a lifetime. <laughs> Covered in a lifetime guarantee. If a seam stitch or grommet breaks, you send it back to the factory and they'll fix it. I don't even know what a grommet is, but you fucking you get that new grommet. It's a green hobbit. Um, to get 10% off your first Birdwell Beach Bridges purchase with lifetime guarantee and free shipping over $99, go to birdwell.com and use discount code dollop at checkout. That's discount code D-O-L-L-O-P at birdwell.com. Pick up your first pair of birdies and see why they've been an American icon since 1961. They also have awesome jackets, which I'm totally into. Which I might get one. You're not going to get one, but I might get. No, one. I know. I'm sure you'll get a couple look, for free. And then the jackets they got I'll like that. See that them and I'll go. Oh, that down. looks great on you. And you'll go. Yeah, it's, it was free. And be, they have like a stripe down the front. Or you can get it across the, get it across the front of the chest area. If you sure. Want. And called it quote his jam pad. Jam pad. I'm the fucking hippo guy. Dave, okay. My name's Gary. <laughs> My name's Gary. Wait. Is it for fun? And this is not going to become the Tiggly Podcast. Okay. This is like anarchy. On a five part coefficient. <laughs> My room's a Now hit him with the puppy. You both present sick arguments. <laughs> no sleep till hippo. No sleep till hippo. Uh, action part. Hi, Gary. No. I sleep done, my friend. No. <laughs> no. Rhoda. Rhoda in the court. Hey, and we're back. Uh, gosh, thanks for coming back, gang. Drive wow. time, dollop. I say you're a. I say you're a guy. This is. And um. Oh no. There's like a big. There's oh, no. a big big meeting of people. It's and, been a while. Uh, is this the guy? And you roll in, and uh, you're just a dick. Like you're just like nine times a dick. You come. You come late. You leave early. Nice. Like and that then, move. And then after you roll out, you're like, uh, hey, that guy said a bunch of shit. And everyone's there that's there is like, no, oh, no, he didn't. That guy didn't say that. And you're like, well, fuck you. I'm not going to play with you guys anymore. Huh. And what if there were reporters there? So these are children? And what if the reporters were there and the reporters were like, hey, he said words, but they literally didn't make any sense. And we're actually really scared right now. Right. Say that happened. Well, if that happens to you, I got to really recommend the online therapy company. This happened to a guy you know. Yeah, Talkspace. Talkspace lets you message a licensed therapist from anywhere at any time. All you need to do is get a, a, a computer with an internet connection or get the Talkspace mobile app. You can improve your mental health. Even if you've had trouble making it uh, in time in the past, you, this is for you, the guy who's traveling around. If people are yelling at you on Twitter constantly and you're yelling back. Mm-hmm. Who um, is this man? 
He's a pal. Mm, he's not a pal. I wouldn't say he's a pal. Okay. Pal's a bad word. Sure. Um, just a red-haired beauty. You know what I mean? Just a beauty. Like a like a like if you saw if if someone took uh if someone took a, a like a pile of uh, just ground beef and they made it into a, a an elongated shape and then they put hair on it. I think that's what we're talking about. Nice hair? No. Remember, therapy isn't just about venting your innermost thoughts or digging into your childhood memories. It's also about practical everyday strategies for stress management and for living a happier life. You can call up and say, hey, maybe I shouldn't go outside. What if I live in the basement from now on and let other people do this? Mm. You can do stuff like that. Okay. The Talkspace platform has over 2,000 licensed therapists who are experienced in addressing life challenges we all face. To match with a perfect therapist for a fraction of the price of traditional therapy, go to Talkspace.com slash dollop and use code dollop to get $45 off your first month and show your support for this show. That's dollop. I'm trying to picture this guy. Talkspace.com slash dollop. It's just a random, I'm, I'm just coming up with like a random person there. There's not, yeah. It's not an actual guy. Yeah, yeah. Like this guy, it, he's he's totally, like he's just some guy that maybe maybe talks shit about the 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 leader of Canada. Canada has a leader? We're, we're also, barely. We're also uh, brought to you by brooklinen.com. Mm. I know that you, I know mm. you have a pretty sweet set of sheets mm. from brooklinen.com. Mm. Is that the sound you make when you're mm. on your Yeah, that's what I'm like, I don't want to leave them. Mm. They make a difference in how you sleep. You can hear Gareth right now. Mm. Get a, get better sleep between your sweet, sweet sheets. That's what I have to say. Brooklinen.com, uh, linen.com, the most comfortable sheets. No big markup, right? They they feel like a like a prince's sheets, but they're Like prince, the artist, yeah. Like the common man can get them. Sure. Like you, <laughs> dirtbag. That's really what aggressive. What just happened? You got what crazy. What just happened? You got crazy, and then you started saying what just happened when you did it. Um, I have a pair of white Brooklyn and sheets because I'm a normal human being. Gareth has a pair of gray ones yeah, because cause... he likes to hide the stains. No, what? It's gray doesn't hide stains. Really? Yeah. What if they're gray stains? Well, what are you... Uh, just keep going. Do you, you eat gray? <laughs> this is over. This conversation's over. Uh, Brooklyn was founded in uh, April 2014 by husband and wife team Vicky and Rich Fulop. You love the Fulops. I've always loved the Fulops. Uh, I've always said that about their the philosophy Fulops. was their philosophy. The most beautiful, comfortable home essentials without crazy prices. No huge markups and fees. Uh, bedding is marked up as much as 300 percent most of the time. Not not Brooklyn. And they're the fastest growing bed linen company in the world. Over 20,000 five star reviews, which you don't have. What's your deal? Bro <laughs> They were a best of online betting category by Good Housekeeping, which I know you. I went to that ceremony. Housekeeping. I presented. Look, I'm saying it's luxury betting. It's underpriced. Get some. Brooklyn sheets are the best, the most comfortable sheets I've ever slept on. Brooklyn.com has an exclusive offer just for our listeners of the dollop. Get twenty dollars off, and free shipping. That is twenty dollars off and free shipping when you use promo code the dollop at Brooklyn. Dot com. Brooklyn and is so confident they offer a risk-free 60-night satisfaction guarantee and a lifetime warranty on all their sheets and comforters. The only way to get $20 off and free shipping is to use promo code the dollop at brooklinen.com. That is B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Promo code the dollop. Boom. Now let's talk about where you're going. Great, love to. Uh, David and everybody else, uh, January, uh, June, January, imagine, June 21st through uh, June 23rd, I will be at the Stress Factory in New Jersey. Uh, I'll be at uh, uh, Laughs Comedy Club in Seattle, June 29th and the 30th. And uh, yeah, and then there's other stuff coming up. There's other stuff coming up. Also, you are wearing a racist shirt. No, I'm not. Because you still uh, enjoy the NFL. So, um, Gareth. Yes, Dave. Uh, we had to cancel uh, Boise, uh, but that because of job stuff. We are going to reschedule it. I know people are mad. Some guy, uh, some guy said, "Don't." Uh, I heard you. Uh, this was something I couldn't. I couldn't change. It's it's on me. Gareth can do whatever. I didn't he do is anything. Not jobless, like a unemployed, dirty, dirty piggy. Shaved and unemployed. Shaved piggy. Um, yeah, but you can go find out where we are going to be at Dollar Podcast dot. Com. And all our tour info is there. Click on the tour button, and yeah. then tour stuff will come up. Also, you can get our, our shirts uh, from the James Fosdyke site on uh, Red Bubble. Red Bubble. All our all our 
official merch is there. If you see and merch any other site than Redbubble, that is not us. And and those are filthy, lying, dirty people. And of course, I'm talking about Teespring, who should be set on fire. Nice. Don't get steal a, from how about, everybody. All right, let's no more lawsuits, okay? Let's just, uh, I don't want a lawsuit. Let's just, I didn't mean let's really. Just, I meant just buy it. Buy allegedly, it so allegedly, 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 allegedly. All right, let's talk about that really quick. Uh, yeah, we did it. We did it. We did an episode of the podcast. <laughs> we did. Um, you wouldn't a, know. It was about the veteran stand uh, thing up at uh, uh, No uh, Dapple, as they call it, uh, the North Dakota Pipeline. Um, it was about a gentleman. Uh, Mike Woods and uh, and he uh, he said, "Hey, we need to talk." And I said, "I don't want to talk." And then and then he said, "Well, that article's all lies, and I'm going to sue them." And I said, "Are you threatening legal action?" He said, "Yes, I'm threatening a legal action. You would be caught up in that suit." And so I uh, I pulled it because I don't want to fucking deal. Basically, yeah. Um, I don't have time for a lawsuit. Yeah. <laughs> Did you put it quite simply? Yeah. Like it's there's certain things you want in your life, and there's things you don't want in your life. But if you want to go read about it, uh, it is on uh, High allegedly. Country News. Allegedly. Uh, and you can Google Veteran Stand. And it's not allegedly. You can go read about that. Allegedly. That's an article. I'm just telling people to go Allegedly, read it. it's an article. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's what happened there. Um, January 7th, 1855. Jesus. Real weird. God, I don't think you do well with cameras filming because you do this visual stuff, which is just terrible. That's what I look like when I'm sexing. Oh, my God. What just happened? Rewind. Charlie Syringo. Syringo? Syringo. Like uh, if a drummer gets knighted. S-I-R-I-N-G-O. Syringo. Syringo. Yeah, like that. But I've deserved this. Formal. Great. Um, he was born in oh, I should have, Matagorda. Sure. County, Texas. Someone's going to be like, it's made a Gorda. Yeah. Um, it's on a strip of land on the Texas Gulf Coast. So it's like a, well, I'll show you. It's oh, like Dave, a, too. It's like a little, uh, a little sort of, they call it a peninsula. Oh, my God. But it's not, it's not a, I don't think it's a peninsula. Is it not there? There it is. How about that? So it's like, um, it's a little strip of land. So he's born on that bad boy. It looks like a Barry Island, right? Yeah. You don't know what a, you don't know what a fucking barrier island is, do you? Yeah, I do. God damn it. Yeah, I do. How do you not know what a barrier island is? I know is? exactly what a barrier island is. What is it? It's an island that serves as a barrier. For what? For sh- ships. No, not for fucking ships. Whales? I don't know. I got halfway there. His mother was an Irish immigrant, his dad was an Italian immigrant. Ooh, that's easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and his dad died when he was one. Sure. So we never have to do that accent. Yeah, but we also would never laugh about uh, a child no, in this situation no, because it's offensive. No. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Could you imagine laughing about yep. a child from the 1880s whose father died when he was one, like 50s, every single still, person yeah. on the dollop? Charlie started going to school when he was uh, four. Okay. Normal, uh, that's fine. That is very not normal for that time. Oh. Uh, the Civil War kicked off when he was six, and then his teacher left to join the war. And that's so, the best news uh, ever. That He didn't go to school anymore. School's that. out. Yeah, you're like, boom. School's out for, for war. <laughs> Doesn't sound like they were rich because Charlie wore, quote, a long white shirt made of a flour sack after some of the big bugs had eaten the flour out. <laughs> All righty. They have that at the gap. Oh, uh, yeah, they do. It's a matter of time. Okay, so he's just kind of in a bug eaten sack? He's in a, uh, yeah, he's in a sack. Shirt? It's been, it's been a sack shirt? Devoured. There's no more flour in it. He's just got a sweet, sweet sack on. Cool. That's cool. How's yours? Keep going, please. His aunt and uncle eventually sent clothes. So that was nice. That's cool. Yeah, so then he had clothes. He hung out with his best friend, Billy. Quote Our three favorite pastimes were riding the milk calves. Coon hunting and sailing playboats on the bay shore. Okay, playboats. So pretty normal childhood. Playboats are just little um, boats. Shooting raccoons, uh, milking, riding, riding milk, milk cows. Riding cows, yeah. Yeah, normal stuff. He'd watch and imitate local cowboys. Uh, sometimes roping wild steer. So he started, you know, picking it up a little bit as he got sure. older. During the war, the Seringo family diet consisted. of almost exclusively of fish, oysters, cornbread, and sweet potatoes. Oh, my God. And diarrhea. I mean, uh, ugh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they made their coffee from parched corn and sweet potatoes. Oh, my God. Which I like to call not coffee. <laughs> corn fee. 
We have corn for here. Could, could I get some more potatoes in my coffee? No, no, we gotta eat the potatoes later because we have oysters and fish. What about parched corn? Can I get some more corn in my coffee? Oh, uh, you can have a little more corn. Boy, this is a real pick-me-up. Hey, are you up yet? <laughs> no, I'm still tired. Feel that corn pulsing through you? Oh, that I corn feel juice. The corn in my veins. Uh, oh man, I had too much corn. Uh, there, so there's fighting all. They were in the, in the area. They were in there. There's fighting all around them, and dead men would just wash up ashore on the beach. The smell of this family must which be bad. Which is fun. I don't know if you've ever experienced. Men that, are just that is, men are just floating up on the beach. Just dead soldiers would just cruise up. That's cool. Just di- died dead sure, in sure. the water. Floaters, they call them. Great, kind cool. Of the float. Uh, place. Right. Charlie was invited to live on a ranch to learn how to run cattle. Okay. Uh, this was his dream, and he now considers considered himself a quote full fledged cowboy. So this is his dream. So he's it's self realized. He's, he's living his dream. Right. He's a young boy, he's living his dream. Right. But after two months on the ranch, Charlie contracted typhoid fever and had to go home. Just like a cowboy. <laughs> Just like the real thing. And we're out. His mother remarried uh, a man named Carrier. Uh, Hello, Mr. I Carrier. hold things. Hello, I'm the holder of things. Um, he said he had a farm and lots of property in Michigan, so they should go there. Uh, he convinced Charlie's mom to sell her house, 60 head of cattle, and the, the 175 acres of land they owned. Um, she didn't make much, or you couldn't get much money for stuff then because the war is on and everything. Sure. So she didn't get a lot of money for it. And then they headed north. Charlie cried. He was very sad. Okay. To leave his homestead, as you, as you would be, I think. No. A- Aaron, have you ever left your home when you were a boy? Yeah. So this must be really hitting hard for you. Just trying to bring you in, buddy. Uh, so uh, he, he he's going to miss his cow brownie. Who, Aaron is? No. Um, oh, Charlie. Charlie. Okay. He was going to miss his, because I was... Brownie? Brownie had been around forever. Yeah. The family took a boat to St. Louis, okay. up the river, as they say. On the boat, there was a bar, a place to drink. Sure. Uh, so Charlie's new stepdad, quote, put in his spare time drinking whiskey and gambling. Nice. And soon had squandered every cent received for the homestead and the cattle. No. So, I mean, it, it had a, the money had a good run. Yeah. That's a bummer. Yeah. Uh, so they get to St. Louis. They move into an old rundown building. So that's not what they were expecting. This wasn't the expecting. plan. This wasn't the plan. They were going to go to Michigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. swore he said he but had But then land. he got them so broke that he's like, we'll just live in this Let's building stay. in St. Louis. What about here? Huh? <laughs> What about this place that has no roof? How much do you think we could get for Brownie? So they left Brownie. Right. Wow, that guy's a sore subject. So um, his set, his st- they get to St. Louis. They step down. This step- isn't so bad, huh, guys? Stepdad finds a job shoveling coal for a dollar a day. Hey, I found a job that's great for me. Oh, good. It's looking up. First, he would bring home a dollar every night. Each night, come home with a brand new buck. Oh then, my. then it became fifty cents. So they're jacking my pay. And then it was a quarter. Hey, I didn't have nothing. And then he would come home just shit faced with a nickel. Well, I did nothing but drink again. <laughs> that is the day. Isn't it? Nick. Did you guys know that you can eat coal? Oh, so good. Have some coffee. Oh, finally, one night he just didn't come home. Hey. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> uh, neighbors fed the family. They, the neighbors helped He didn't out. come home for ages. No, he was gone. He was done. He was done. Okay, interesting. That's a fun, sure. So Charlie then earned money shoveling uh, snow and sawing wood around where he could. Okay. And then one day a letter came from their stepfather with $10 inside. Okay. From the mm-hmm. guy who bounced? Yeah. Okay. So he's he's showing that he's got his shit together. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, he found a new job chopping wood. And he asked his wife to bring the stepkids and join him in Lebanon, uh, Illinois. Oh, thank God. Yeah. And she did. She was like, okay, well, he's, he's got he's enough. He's reformed. He's got it together to get money in he's an envelope. He's better. Yeah. He put $10 in some paper. Right. So he's He's, he's good again. He's Yeah. So things went well uh-huh. for a while. Uh-huh. And then Charlie's stepfather started spending less time working and more time drinking. Okay. So he's right. He's uh, he's an alcoholic, is what sure. they call that. Right, and he's relapsing. Yeah, right. Uh, so soon Charlie had to take over the wood chopping job. So dad's drinking, stepdad's drinking, and Charlie's doing the work. Sure, making eight dollars a month to keep the family alive. Jesus. Uh, quote: I was working out in the cold without gloves and only half clothed. Oh, so I assume he was topless working. Well, uh, it's time to get that flower bag. I mean, if we're talking half clothed, I hope it's the top. I hope it's the bottom that's naked. I always prefer that look. His it's a de- fun look. His stepdad started becoming Business mean. Business casual. 
um, stepdad started becoming mean. Uh huh. So mean and worthless, the neighbors ran him out of the county. Okay. That's bad. Yeah. Quote, a crowd surrounded the house one night, took him out and preached him a sermon. Then they gave him until morning to either skip or be hung. He didn't wait till morning. Yeah, he go. Was, that was he was out. Okay. Yeah. Well, good run. The yeah. good dude. No, he had a good. You know, you're good if the entire town's like go. Yeah, the go. whole town's like we're gonna go or we're gonna kill you. So here's our deal: we're gonna kill you or you leave because you're awful. You're a terrible person. Also, here's a sermon. Oh, um, Christ is good. Let's see. Let's Christ do Christ sermon. stuff. Christy, Christy, Christy. This Christ. is really hey. This is really great. Christ, were you raised religious, Aaron? Okay, so that I, I can't get a I can't get an affirmative on whether or not I nailed so, no, that was really sermon. good. It seemed like a sermon, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Jesus comes down from the hills mm, again. Mm, mm, Jesus mm, is mm, down mm, from the hills mm, again. Mm, he mm, is God. Mm, he is great. Mm, Jesus mm, came mm, down mm, from the mm, hill. He's mm, late. Bicycle yeah. hat. Bicycle hat. No, no, don't. I'm doing like a different. What is your deal? Ele- electronica. Electronica. <laughs> Cool. So what, you just know music from Sirius XM stations? I believe it to be electronica. So Charlie's now 13 years old. Okay. His mother and sister uh, leave. They go to find work in St. Louis, and they sure. leave him behind because okay. he's 13. He can, he can handle it. No, for sure. He's 13. All right. So he comes down with malaria. Cool. The uh, ad- that's fun adolescent yeah. disease. Uh, yeah. Uh, he, yeah. A lot of adolescents get that, but you can take pills for that now. Sure. That um, now. Yeah. So he had, he only had 90 cents because, um, his boss, after his stepdad left, he's like, well, your stepdad owed $35 and that's how much you had. So that's cool. Um, so Charlie then took off. He's like, well, I'm going to go to St. Louis and find my mom. Okay. Which is easy to do. St. Louis is just a big city. And all you have to do is just Look, go there. You're 13. You have 90 cents. Go to St. Louis. How You'll not, figure it out. You're not going to find you're your mom. Figure it out. Just walk into St. Louis. What and are you go, worried about? Mama. Yeah. You got 90 cents, Dave. I think you're going to be able to figure it out. Yeah. You got this. Uh, did you just burp. Yeah. It's cool. It's good. It's professional. They teach that in radio school. So when he arrived, he they had teach no naming classes wherever you went to school. Yeah. When he arrived here, he basically had no money, so he sold his Bible for 25 cents to buy food. Oh, my God. Right away, do that. Yeah, get re- <laughs> what? Why do you have that? Yeah, at that, at that point, that thing I mean, that's the out. equivalent of going to a coin star. Yeah, for sure. That's immediate. Yeah. First thing you do. That was the original coin star. You'd put your Bible in, and then t- Here's a quarter. a quarter would come out. Oh, nice. Uh, he got a job as a bellboy, and he worked for a whole year, but then he got into a fight with another bellboy, and he left. Hmm. Um, and, and then he decided to go to New Orleans, so he stowed away on a ship, um, got caught, had to work his way the whole way there. And <laughs> okay. then he got, he got injured because a, a, he was loading grain and it fell on him. Sure. He's having a good run. Yeah. So there he, he's broke, and he's in New Orleans now, uh, a little bit hurt. And then some weirdo just walks up to him on the street. Hey. <laughs> How you doing, boy? <laughs> uh, I'm going to picture a Lou Pearlman if that's okay. With <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Quote, well-dressed old man, about 50 years of age, with oh, an umbrella right. over his head. Hello! Hello, it's not raining! I predict rain. I'm a freak! He made Charlie an offer uh, to help his wife around in the house for $4 a month, and after four months, he said he would then buy Charlie's passage to Texas. So he'd buy him his passage back home. Okay, passage meaning trip. Yeah. Right, okay. So Charlie's like, all right, I'll help your old lady around for four months. Sure, uh, weird guy who thinks it's raining. Yeah. So Mr. and Mrs. Myers had a very big home and no kids. Uh, this is shady. What? This is just shady. Don't you? If you don't have kids, you go when you find one on the street no, with your umbrella. No, this is how you like get a body. This, this is just how you get like a body. They treated Charlie like a son. Mm. Um, they enrolled him in public school. Okay. Um, but then Charlie got into a fight and he ran away. Okay. He got in a fight school and he just instead of going home, he ran. He ran. Well, so then they put him into a private uh, school. And, That's how, yeah. And then he got into a fight with a bully. Sure. And he stabbed him in the leg. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Okay. So and then the bully got up to run, and and Charlie chased him. Okay. And then he stabbed him in the back. Okay. Okay. So just all right. So are we? Do we have all the stabbings? Yeah, yeah. This okay. Is so that's classic thirteen. So he's got a leg stabbing followed by the back stabbing. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh-huh. Cool. Um, so what's next? Boarding school or where do we? Well, Charlie thought he had killed him, so he uh, he jumped on a ship that was going to St. Louis and stowed away. Okay, so not a big details guy. So he got the fuck out of there. Is what he did. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, so is again, that the end of that? Again, yeah, that was the end of that so story. He just, he these just people failed. just put him in two schools until he almost killed a guy or yeah. thought he killed yeah, a guy basically. and then he stowed away again? Yeah, I mean, it's why you don't take in street urchins. Sure. So he, he still couldn't find his mom in St. Louis. I think he dodged a bullet with that couple. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. The weird umbrella thing. guy yeah. was definitely going to do something weird. Yeah, yeah. He's he got was, a real get out He vibe. was going to end up baking yeah, or something. for sure. Yeah, hanging in the, in the basement or whatever. Yeah. Just, Cured meat. No, or maybe just some sort of like, you know, nodded to the wall sex slave for his yeah, wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do it anymore, Charlie, but I'm going to watch you and tell you what to do. <clears throat> Give it to the missus. Look at you hitting puberty. Uh, or you'll be bacon. Okay, so he's in St. Louis. He looks for his mom. He can't find his mom. And then he goes back. Jesus. To the weird couple in St. Louis. Oh, no. He's like, he what goes are you back guys to the bacon doing? house? What do you got? Well, because they were feeding him and taking care of him. Yeah, so he's like, they're fattening him up like Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> they eat. They got him back into the private school. The private school took him back. What? On what grounds? After the stabbing. Did they remove his hands? No, they were like, oh, he was probably like, I won't stab anybody anymore. And they're nah, like, No, but he did okay. do it twice on one guy. I know, but maybe he deserved it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got away with two stabbings. I mean, it's. So did he. It's. <laughs> You're just a young teen. Like, it's just, you know, a crazy time. Oh, my voice is changing and I'm stabbing more. <laughs> Boy, my body's going through a whole bunch of different changes. There's hair on my balls, and I'm stabbing people. Well, um, a couple things have happened. I'm getting uh, nocturnal emissions, and I crave the taste of brain. Jesus. Sorry, I'm one of these adolescents you read about. Uh, one day, there was a fire near the school, and, and Charlie was like, can I go look at the fire? And the teacher was like, no. And he's like, well, I'm going to look at the fire. And then... and then You know how you combat that? Yeah, Arm yeah. teachers with fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and then he got there and he was like, oh shit, I've, I fucked up. I shouldn't go back to school. What? Um, so he hopped on a steamship headed for Texas. Good God, <laughs> what is going on? Is he, I mean, he's like Forrest Gumping he's it. Not, he's not great at facing problems. Yeah. That's how I feel right now. He's a cut and runner. And he's also a kid. He's 15 or 16 now. Yeah. Um, so he, he goes to Texas. He gets a job working as a cowboy at one of the biggest ranches in Texas. Okay. Right. So he's living the dream. He's back to living the dream. Sure. Um, he, he traveled, uh, the West driving Longhorn cattle, Brandon, unclaimed cattle, other cowboys, nicked him, nicknamed him dull knife. Cause he had a knife that he would use to kill rattlesnakes all the time. He'd throw it at him and stab him. Then he cut their heads off. Why is it dull knife? Because it's a dull knife. Because he just cut it so much, and he, I guess he oh. never sharpened it or whatever. Maybe it's hard to cut. Do they know about the stabbings? I don't know if they do. I don't know if he would bring that up to people. Yeah, probably not. Hey, you guys, this is a funny story. One time, you I know, it's funny. You guys called me dull knife. I stabbed a boy in the neck and neck in the leg, and then I stabbed him in the back, and I was like, hey, hey, hey I should leave. Anyway, that's my story. And I was so sure I killed him. I I left. <laughs> <laughs> he could be dead. I and then know. I went back to the couple. I came back a couple a little while later. And I was okay. like, hey, I couldn't find my mom. I mean, I had 90 cents. So after two years, Charlie, just after two years working on the ranch, he decides to move on. Good God. And he went to settle up with the old Irishman who kept the store there. So the guy would, he would keep their pay for when they were leaving. Okay. And then also they would buy stuff at the store. Sure. Um, his name was Hunky Dory Brown. I'm um, sorry? Hunky Dory Brown? His name was Hunky Dory Brown. It's a classic Irish name. Is he Irish? Yep. Hunky his name Dory is Brown? Hunky Dory. Hunky Dory, yeah. I'm, that's probably a nickname. So, like, Hunky Dory's like something Midwest teachers say. It's also a guy. That's insane. A lot of things are insane. Hunky Dory? Yeah. How are you? I'm the original. Uh, you know, when you feel like everything's pretty good, you just say me. <laughs> just think old Hunky Dory Brown. HDB. Yeah. Hunky Dory. I got it. How are you? I'm leaving. <laughs> well, I'm Hunky Dory. Okay. And I'm also doing Hunky Dory. I don't like you. <laughs> I don't like anything about you. <sighs> so. Things are lonely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they are. Your name's terrible. You have a terrible name. It's impossible. I know. It's been an absolute curse. I hope you. Parish. I am. So, uh, oh, you want to see what he looks like? Who, Hunky Dory Brown? Uh, young young uh, Charlie. Oh, that's here. Charlie. Wow. Big so, uh, pocket, pocket kerchief. So guy. from the store, Charlie had earned a few hundred dollars during the two years he had worked there, and Hunky Dory put it on the counter and then told Charlie how much he owed the store. Uh-oh. He took it all back and left 75 cents. What? <laughs> well, I, I, I so, mean, so he's just bull... He's 
he's full of it. Well, that was just the classic. That was the classic move. It still is a. It still is a move in some places. But they, it, when you work on a farm, that's what they would do. They have but, a store. Uh, you also did eat a lot. Yeah, you ate food, so that's going to be a problem. You ate hundred and eighty dollars worth of beans. How much was my pay? Well, two hundred dollars. And then, of course, there's the bean eating fee. Wait, what? That's nine dollars for eating the beans. For eating the beans. Plus fork rental, plate usage. No, Just going to no. add those up. Oh, boy. What? You're, <laughs> I mean, you're coming out pretty good. You get 75 cents. I worked here for seven years. Ah, yeah. So just think about that from a bean standpoint. The uh, way I like to look at it is you ate almost a billion beans. That's no, beans don't think. They don't, you can't look at something from a bean standpoint. Oh, uh, well, uh, buddy, I don't have time to talk about bean POV with you. Here's your three quarters. Take care. I think I just invented bean peel. Hey, there's no asides in here. Sorry. You're not allowed. To read the goddamn side on the door. No asides. No shirts, no shoes, no service, no asides. I just invented Hey, ba, 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 ba. hey. Bean. get out of here if you're having an aside. Bean peel. Get out of here if you're having an aside. Get G out. Google bean POV and MILF. What? <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> Gotta go. <laughs> when he was 18, Charlie and a friend started a business skinning cattle. Finally. I assume that the cattle were dead. Well, that's a hope. Uh, after winter, he made, uh, after just one winter, he made $114. Okay, so, so like, the most money he's ever made yeah, in his entire he's, life he's like, by I'm far. Fucking rich. He bought a saddle. And after learning, he learned where his mom was from a friend. He sent her 25 bucks. He's like, I'm fucking, shit's going crazy here. Okay. And then he bought a ship with a friend and named it the Bloodhound. Okay, so sure. So we're fucking rolling, aren't nah. we? Nah. Um, he would then go down the coast of Texas. He would buy melons. Sure. And then he would sail up river and he would sell them to factory workers to eat on, on their lunch or whatever. Great. Right. Guys come out of factory and like, you want a melon? Right. And they'd be like, yo, well, you bet I want a melon. Hey, look, there's that Bloodhound boat with all that's melon. And when oyster season would come, uh -huh. he'd switch to selling oysters instead of melon. He'd Go up river. Oh, that's just as refreshing. Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> Man, a nice quick oyster break in the hot, hot sun. We've been painting and fixing all day. Those melon quenches your thirst, but so does that juice that sticks around the shell of an oyster. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm as hydrated as ever. A lot of factories, like I know Ford, won't allow oysters anymore. They won't? No. Singer <laughs> stopped allowing I like how I'm, no naming, oyster I like breathers. I'm naming companies. All right, that, guys, that's an equity oyster five. Don't exist. Um, and then, uh, and the, so then after that, he went back, he got rid of the ship and he went back to cowboying. Sure. Uh, moving herds, skinning cattle, branding, that kind of stuff. He drank, got in fights, just lived a life, lost a lot of money betting. In April, Charlie, quote, got shot through the knee with one of those old time dragoon pistols, which carried a very large ball. Okay. So he's Im immobilized and he's like, you know what? I'm going to try. I'm going to try and go to school again since I can't do anything else. Okay. So he's basically an adult, kind of 18 or something. Sure. He's going to um, get his GED. He went there for two weeks and got into a fight with the teacher and left. Great. Okay, good. So <laughs> now can we officially say school's not for him? Is it time to, can we? Well, he doesn't have the best luck in school. Well, yeah, no, people keep falling into his knives. Now, somehow word got to his mom that he'd been shot, and then she came to help him, but before she got there, he left He left and went to Houston. Obviously. Ships passing in the night kind of thing. Yeah, it was time to leave. He'd been there for a while. Um, so she stayed and waited for months. And Boy, this really, I mean, it just does show you, like, the... The we're so I mean, it's so easy to contact I, people though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so we're we're loving it with cell phones. She's waiting months, months in Houston. Months. He'll come back. Or no, she's he's uh, he's on his way to Houston. Uh, yeah, he, she's in the Panhill area, Panhandle area. Panhill. Um. So uh, she stays with friends who are named Morris. Um. When uh, we're all, we are Morris. Hi, we're Morris. We are all Morris. Hi, I'm Morris. Drink from the cup of Morris and become one of us. Hi. We are all Morris. Drink, Charlie. We are Morris. <laughs> All right, get you. He's, he's a weirdo. So, um, so he comes back after a while. I don't, know, I don't know how long. And then, um, he decided that him and his mom decided to build a house together. They're like, let's build a house, and we'll put our money together, and build a house. Sure. Um, so they put it together, and they gave it to Mister Morris who took a schooner to go up to Indianola to buy wood. So he's heading up river to buy wood. Sure. Um, but then a hurricane came. 
Okay. And uh, it hit. This while... is before they named him. Yeah. Yeah. And it hit while Mr. Morris was going up the river, uh-uh. um, and the boat and everything on it was gone, including the money. Oh boy. Yeah. And Mr. Morris? Uh, he's all right. Oh, okay. But he's they lost the money. I guess that was maybe sitting on the top of the ship under an anchor. Like, you know, you, if you have a lot of money, you'll just put an anchor. You put money down and then anchor on top sure, of it. Sure, yeah, a paperweight. Yeah, it's an old sailor thing. Hmm. Um, so the money's gone. Uh, he, uh, he Then he told his mom, well, I, I'm going to go up the trail, meaning he's going to go get cowboy work. And he said he'd be back by fall. And then uh, she waited for four years okay. before he came back. Cool. Any way to give a heads up? No. no I mean, it was hard. At Possible way? No, I don't think so. It's not a snooze button. Um, what? Just leaving? delaying the years. I think you can. It's a different time. Like some nowadays, you'd be out and you'd be like, "Hey, I, I'm gonna go out for a couple hours, maybe out for four. But then, but then it was years. You'd be like, "I'm gonna be gone for like Great six defense. months," and then you're like, "Oh, it's been eight years." Hi, I'm a man. <laughs> So uh, he goes back to being a cowboy. Uh, he's working on a ranch. Billy the Kid Whoa. and his gang show up one time. Um, kid, the kid was trying to unload stolen horses. Okay. Uh, the two guys got to know each other. They even had a shooting contest. Billy Kid was faster. Um, in 1881, Billy the Kid's gang took cattle from the ranch that Charlie was working on. So they came to sell horses, stolen horses, and then they came back later and stole, stole cows okay. from uh, these guys. Uh, or cattle, whatever. Uh, and then, uh, and then they he drove them to New Mexico, and then he was having them butchered, like you know, take, taking care of from me, turning them into meat is what. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Just because I'm a vegetarian doesn't mean that I don't understand. When if you're gonna, because so meat comes from cows, I understand, and other animals. No, I get that. And to get it, you got to cut the cow Super clear. into little very clear pieces, basically. Completely understand. And then never not understood and then, it. And then you can go to a butcher, and he yep. will sell you parts For of sure. that, and he will take that home Absolutely. and cook it. Yep. You get that? Yes. Okay. Charlie and uh, a few others were sent to get the get the cows, try to get them before they're butchered. I understand. And if not, you can get you can get the what's left of the because they're in pieces. I understand how it works with a butcher. I get it. Okay. It just doesn't. I seem get like, it. It doesn't seem. It's like very clear. It. Okay. So uh, they were told not to try to capture Billy the kid for the reward money. Get Billy the cow. Until they had the cattle, so they were like, "You can get the get the cattle first, and then you then can get, get Billy, Billy the, kid. the kid." Right? Okay. So Charlie found the guy who was butchering the cattle. Okay. Right. So this guy's cutting up the cow. Yeah, I, no, of course. Yeah, I don't even need to see the gesture. Pieces. Yes, he's a butcher. He's a butcher. He's, he makes and meat and like pieces. A steak and for a sure. Yeah, roast. there's different cuts you can for make sure. Some hamburger. Different cuts, absolutely. There's a ribeye. Tongue. Tongue. Like you, sure. Yeah, it's not high on the they list. They use a lot of the parts. Yeah, they do for sure. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, and that was in Vegas. That guy was in Vegas. Of course. And so Billy was getting supplies, um, and then he heard that the other guys killed Billy the Kid. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so Charlie had to stay in New Mexico to testify at the trial of the slaughterhouse guy, the butcher, okay. the guy who cuts up the cows. Yep. He cuts them in yes. a piece. Okay. Uh, so while he was there, he got smallpox. <laughs> Which is a kick in the Jesus. pants. It's a, you're just there. To, you're just like, man, I got just jury, I got jury yeah. fucking duty, yeah. and then bam, you're covered in yeah. sores. Ah. Uh. Um. So there was no doctor. So this is part of the delay. Yeah. It's yeah. Part of the. Delay. So okay. there's no doctor. Of course not. Um. Uh. So he has to ride two. So while he has smallpox, he has to ride 200 miles. Oh. On a horse, it's raining. Uh. So he's sleeping at night in the rain. Covering smallpox, he, uh. he and then he had to hide his illness from people because if anybody saw him, they would throw him in a pest house, which is where they nice put name. in the West. That's where they put people at smallpox. They'd throw you in a in a house. That's been a couple movies recently. Anyway, uh, his quote: "Face from nose to chin being a solid scab and terribly swollen." Uh. Mm, that is sexy. Uh, that that is. I mean, oh god, it just does make you like. In in this day and age, you are so like just even neosporin just yeah. for the drive. Just yeah. <laughs> just to, just on the on the ride there to just be like ah, oh the rain really dries it out. <laughs> Ow. God. Uh, Charlie's asked that uh, nobody make him smile literally. Anyway, he rented a room, put a handkerchief around his face, stayed. I'm there. robbing banks. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> when he was well, he and his mother, uh, he went back to his mother. They moved to Kansas. So he beat smallpox. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they go to Kansas together. He's like, let's move to Kansas. I'm tired of this shit. Yeah. Uh, well, he, he's, he wants to get to every state. Yeah. Yeah. And he got offered a job there in Kansas. So he took it. 
His mother's happy to go. She's like, let's get the fuck out of here. Quote, there is only one thing she hated to leave behind. Charlie. And that was her wood pile. Okay. She had spent two years lugging wood and piling it up against her old shanty for old age. So that was like her. She's uh, a wood hoarder? It was like her pension. Oh, interesting. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. S- sad and interesting. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it was a different time. Uh, when he was 29, Charlie met Mammy Lloyd. Hello, I'm Mammy. Quote, I fell head over heels in love with a pretty little 15-year-old black-eyed uh, miss whom I accidentally met. That, that's pretty normal back then. 15 what is he? Is, he's, he's 29. So he's half of her age. So when she was, when he was 14, she was zero, which is exciting. So just three days after meeting, we were engaged. And at the end of the three days... We were made one, so they got married. Oh, okay. Um, I thought they were melted sounds together. Sounds like six days they got married. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's right. good. That's good. That's that's good. Yeah. Three days later, uh, he got he had to go off and drive cattle um, back somewhere, and he he didn't come back for six months. So great. Well, that's meets fun. a girl, meet a girl. Nine days later, you're sure you're back on your job. Yeah. Um, after a few days, he came back. Um, six months later, after a few days. He was told he had to head out again, but he didn't want to leave his new wife. Sure. You know? He's like, I just, we've only been doing, been able to do it for three days. Well, he doesn't want to miss her 16th. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he swore off, quote, swore off cow punching. He's like, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not, I'm not driving the cows. Mammy's um, my cow now. He ran a tobacco store. Sure. And also an ice cream and oyster parlor. What is going on with this man and oysters? I mean, this is a perversion at this point, right? Man, would you like some uh, oysters on your mint chip? Absolutely not. Here we go. Uh, Just Oh, they slide right off the ice cream. I would forget right. that. I've been working for so long and I forget how much the oysters just slide right sprinkles? off. Sprinkles? Oysters? Oyster sprinkles. <laughs> what do you need? You want a shell on the... Do you, would you like your ice cream oysters. in a shell? Ugh. Ugh. Uh, an ad he ran. This man that. likes oysters too much. An ad he ran from that time. Charlie S- Seringo wants every cow puncher, nester, and Chinaman in the United States to know that he makes a specialty of fine cigars and tobacco. Okay. So he's reaching out. Covering to a lot of demos. Different people. Yeah. Uh, Mammy made the newspaper herself. Quote, Miss Charlie Seringo found $15 lying on the sidewalk Sunday evening. And as soon as the owner was discovered, returned it to him. Honest little woman. A man would have kept it and played seven up on that stake for a week. By the way, we're not a paper. We're just anecdotal typing. <laughs> Imagine a paper. Uh. I'm, Honey, did you hear this story about the woman who found $15? Oh, my God. If that was a man, he would have kept it. That's what the paper's saying. <laughs> I love papers. But they found the man who dropped it. Oh, yeah. wow. That's interesting. Whoa, hold on. Not, yeah. I didn't mean to distract you. Did you see this one story? What's that? There's a man uh-huh. who has a frog. Oh my goodness! Like a like a wet like a f- hopping frog. Yeah, hopping frog. Oh my goodness! Oh wow! We do live in fun times. Oh, hold on a minute! What? Hold on! I've seen the craziest thing I ever seen. What's that? This is a story about a woman. Huh? And she's got flowers. Oh! In her hair. Oh my goodness! Oh. oh, I love the news. Now, you know what's interesting. Yeah. Think back in the 1600s when they didn't have stories organized like I this. No. What did they do for fun? Well, they must have just stared at the wall. Oh, man, we're lucky to live in such exciting we times. We are. Read me the frog story again. All right. Now, a man. After a couple of years, Charlie thought he was one hell of a businessman and too big for a little town. A man like him belonged in Chicago. Sure. He's now 31. Okay. He wrote his first book, A Texas Cowboy, or 15 Years on the Hurricane Deck of a Spanish Pony. What? Yeah, look. Um, that's that's his book. Huh. A Texas Cowboy, 15 Years on the Hurricane Deck of a Spanish Pony. Cover's a little busy. By Chas A. Seringo. I don't know why it's Chas. Maybe that's his nickname. Um, so he's now 31. He's got his first book. Um, he's killing it. He goes to Chicago. Workers there uh, not having a great time. Uh, they're trying to organize to get an eight-hour workday. The businessmen are like, oh, no, you should 15's be. 15's better. You should more, shouldn't you be more slate, slate, better. slavish? 
Um, and they also were fighting for equal pay for woman, women, which you can imagine. That's great that that still hasn't happened. So strikes were on and others are being discussed like around Chicago. Owners of factories, railroads, mines, service industries and other businessmen are not happy with what's happening. OK, the McCormick Reaper Works made a 71 percent profit in 1884 and still wanted to cut worker pay. OK, so wow. The, yeah. Imagine. <laughs> imagine. You, I can't imagine. Imagine a guy having billions of dollars now and not paying people enough money to get off food stamps. We live in fair times now. Bezos. Um, so they start hiring scabs. Strikes happen. They hire scabs. There's fights with the scabs, the police, the Pinkertons. Uh, there's a rally at Haymarket Square, which was called to protest police brutality, which you're a big fan of. Um, I think the cops should be able to do whatever they want. <laughs> uh, someone threw a homemade bomb at some point. Uh, I made that. Uh, exploded. Police were killed. Police shoot people. It's all a fucking mess. Okay. Charlie, his wife, and baby were rooming uh, with a family on nearby Harrison Avenue. Quote, we went to bed expecting a riot before morning, so we were not surprised when we heard the explosion of the bomb and soon after the shooting, which followed. After the riot, the city was all excitement, and I commenced to wish that I were a detective so as to help ferret out the thrower of the bomb and his backers. I'd like to ferret this man out. I'd like to get in on this. Did you say ferret? Ferret. I'd like to ferret him out. Yeah. Mm, that's a different thing. Where Yo, I come never from. mind. Never mind. I was thinking. You don't want to ferret him out where I come from. I'm looking more for a sex dungeon. Oh no! Sorry, that's what I'm offering. Oh, hello. Yes, hello. That, that is the kind of ferret. Yes, meet the latex ferrets. Oh. <laughs> so Charlie decided to join the Pinkertons National Detective Agency. Oh wow. Okay. Which was headquartered in Chicago. Um, he got a letter of introduction from his bank. Sure. Meet Charlie. The letter quote. Gentlemen, the bearer, Mr. Charlie A. Seringo, we know to be a person of good character and having been a cowboy and he b and brought up on the pl plains, his services and ability are commendable to you. The bank said this? Yes, the bank. The bank wrote a letter of recommendation. Okay. We this are the is, bank. I would love to go into fucking my bank now and just be like, hey, hey can you guys, I know you're a credit union, yeah. well, a sad credit union, but listen, uh... I want to get a job at 7-Eleven. Oh, we'd love to recommend you. And, oh, you can We've do that? always loved how you banked. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, you bank really well. Thank you. So, yeah, we have no problem setting up a general meeting over there. Great. Yeah, we'd love to get you in the mix there. We really would. I mean, we just think that you're fantastic. You're a great bank. You're a great guy. Thank and you. we are the bank, and we are great, too, and you are great, and mm -hmm. we love having your money here. <laughs> yeah, this but awesome. we, we're rooting for you. This is awesome. We're rooting for you. This is awesome. We're rooting for I you. I like you guys. We love you. Uh, can I work here? Hey. Yeah. Okay. I. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you seem unqualified, but yeah. again, we just love you so I much. I like money. We love you so you know much. I mean? I well, like you're money. not to touch it in any personal okay. capacity, but okay. we love it. Okay. Okay. That's a gun. Oh. It's in your face. Uh huh. I want money. Okay. This is a bad. I'm doing a bad interview. Right yeah. Now. I just realized I shouldn't do that. Great. Okay. You're still hired. Okay. We're the bank. We I love, love you. I love money. And we love that you retracted when you pulled the gun out. Thank That's great you. for us. Also, I want a letter of recommendation. Absolutely. I'm going to get a new suit. Great, for sure. And I need the tailor to you know, just... Hey, we don't have any questions. We're just a bank. Okay. Charlie also used Pat Garrett, uh, the killer of Billy the Kid, as a reference. Okay. Uh, saying he... Uh, Pat said that uh, Charlie had assisted in getting Billy the Kid. Okay. Which is a lie. Sure. William Pinkerton then hired him. Okay. Now, William Pinkerton, uh, was his nickname was Big Eye. Right. Um, he is Alan Pinkerton's son, so he's not... He's not the guy who came up with the Pinkertons. He is the son of the guy who invented the Pinkerton okay. agency. Now, the, now the original guy who invented the Pinkerton agency was cool. Like he was actually he actually just solved crimes and he wasn't a bad guy. And then William took over, and William is what is known as a piece of shit. Oh, I've read about those. Yeah. Uh, so uh, they, but the Pinkerton hired men of all ages, colors, nationalities. They didn't hire women. Alan had hired women, but this guy wouldn't hire women. Okay. Um, they even have an African-American guy in the office that they call Black Jim. Sure. Which is, that's how you tell them apart from other people. You just yell out. Well, if you, you only know. have one black guy in the office, you I don't black think Jim. you know. Yeah, that's no. totally fine. Jim will do. Yeah. Well, Black Jim. We're going to call you Black Jim. Jim will do. But we'll go, we'll go, we're going to go, just to tell you apart, we're going to go. We're gonna go the only way that's Jim. okay is if everybody else has white before Okay, so name. that guy over there, his name is Jim, right? Uh-huh. So we call him Jim. Uh-huh. So we call you Black Jim. Oh, can't we just call him White Jim? No. <laughs> Why? He's, right. he's Jim. Right. Okay. 
Uh, uh, so the agency is not really what Charlie was expecting. He found his line of work to be filled with men, quote, devoid of moral principle or character. Okay. He found the detectives were just writing up fake reports that would please clients. One operative wrote, quote, blood curdling reports of things the anarchists were doing to do, were going to do to society and the moneyed class. So he, they were just like making writing, up stuff right. that, that they thought people fake would news. be, people would be doing and, and, you know, They're predicting. Yeah, give them to the businessmen, raking in the dough. Okay. Um, he was immediately shown. We how, never sleep. He was immediately shown how. That's the that's the slogan of the Pinkerton Agency. We never sleep. We're never. We're all on meth. We're exhausted. God help us, Pinkerton. Help we're us, seeing please. Things. Pinkertons, we're hallucinating from a lack of sleep and meth use. Pinkertons, please help us. I've... <sighs> Pinkertons, there's bugs under our skin. He immediately was shown how to fill out expense reports. Operatives were paid $8 per day and all expenses, even laundry. Whoa. When he turned in his first set of bills, his superior gave them back, quote, as he said, the client was wealthy and it was the custom of the agency to allow their operatives to overcharge so as to make extra money. This was how Pinkerton kept men employed without paying a high salary. Wait, so explain that. So Pinkerton's not paying very much money. Sure. So they would just submit fake expenses to, to clients, the cl right, and okay. then that's how they would get their pay. That's cool. So Charlie did it. He doubled the expenses. He was okay. like, okay, I guess that's he what we ball. do here. Uh, he didn't like it. He didn't feel good about it. Um, but he didn't consider exposing the Pinkerton agency. He was sure he wouldn't have been believed, and if he was believed, the agency would set him up to fall, take a fall for a crime. So right. he's like, I can't you know, deal with these. These guys will fuck me. Right. I have to steal. I have to steal. Right. That's a problem, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, he considered quitting, but justified staying by convincing himself the agency would do bad shit with or without him, so he may as well stay and do what good he could. Yeah. That's what's known as one of the good bad guys. Bullshit. One of the good bad guys. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if I wasn't here, then, then he went to Wall Street. He'd still be doing it. Yeah. Charlie was stationed in Denver. That's where he was sent. Sure. One of his first cases, the Pinkertons were hired by a wealthy banker who had stolen his, the bank's money. The banker stole the bank's money. Bank steals his own bank's money. Okay. And took off to Canada. Okay. So the Pinkertons were hired to make sure that no one from the U.S. came and kidnapped him and brought him back to face justice. Okay. And sure enough, someone did come and kidnap him and try and take him back to the U.S., but the Pinkertons got there in time and saved him and brought him back to Canada to live out his wonderful life as a criminal on the run. Okay. So it's a good, they're good people. Right. As long as they get paid. Yeah. Charlie was the only guy, uh, Superintendent Ames, who's his boss, uh, in Denver had not handpicked. So he's picked all of his other detectives except right. for Charlie got sent to him. One of his picks was, quote, a noted safe blower. He told Charlie he had been pardoned. Hey, if you give me the code, I know how to make you happy. A what? Give me the code and I'll figure it out. Code What's the combination of the safe? I don't have a safe. Give me the combo. I, I don't know what Take we're doing. Take your pants off. I'll give you the combo. Right. You give me the combo. What? Oh. Take your pants oh, off. Oh, 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 hi, hi. Hey. Hi, I didn't know this was that kind of place. Yeah, yeah, I'm a hey. safe blower. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Hi, how are you? We're good. My Ready pants to are earn. off. Yeah. Pants are off, pants are off, pants are off. Hi. Okay. I'm nervous. Okay. I've never been blown by a safe. All right. No. That's what happens? Wait, what? No. I'm going to suck. Right. Huh? No. Cowboy. Okay. This okay if it's okay done. if I yell cowboy nah, when you do this it? this conversation's over. Okay. Uh, did I blow that? Yeah. Because you didn't. Hi. Huh. <laughs> um, so uh, two Pickerton detectives in Denver, quote, kept trunks in the detective's room full of stolen clothes, jewelry, and more. One of them went on to become uh, the mayor of Portland, sure. Oregon. Sure, Trunk club. Normal stuff. Uh, it was common uh, to bill up to four clients at a time, even though the clients God, thought so lawyery. that each operative was on their case exclusively. But that so lawyery. It is lawyery, isn't it? Ugh. Super lawyery. Oh, Gross. I spent uh, 0.5 minutes on I, your call. I scanned something. That'll be $100. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Pinkerters said they did not get involved in divorces, but that was not true. So they would like outwardly advertise saying they didn't get involved in divorces. But we do. But we never sleep. Uh, Charlie and we're in Denver. There was one man who had an affair with a woman. And to keep it out of the papers, uh, the man hired the Pinkertons 
to keep the woman's husband quiet. So the guy who fucks fucks the wife. How do they keep the guy's husband quiet? Well, that's, that's yeah. So how they're going to do intimidation. that? Intimidation. Yeah. Right. The Pinkertons' plan was to meet him in an alley and hit him with a pipe. Okay. So they're like really calculated detectives, <laughs> and they really. All right, boys, we got to do this one right. So we took a lot of time. We thought about this a lot. Hey, boss, I found a pipe. All right, great. So the four of us will go in the alley and let's just beat him with the pipe. Ah, that's great. Great. That's a great. Let's call it an early night. Early night. Or an early night. Um, they actually wanted Charlie to do it. They told Charlie to go hit the guy with the pipe. Hey, Charlie, uh, you're but, the best guy for the pipe thing. But he was like, I'm not going to do that. Okay, cool. Someone else will do it then. So they ended up hiring an outside guy, a contractor situation. How you doing? I'm the guy I'll swing a pipe for money. But then the husband just beat the shit out of that guy. Hey, so something went bad down there. Well, I was going to meet the guy. I'm not good with pipes. So the guy took a pipe and then beat me with the pipe. <laughs> So now Charlie is on the outs with uh, Superintendent Ames. Like, like he's like, "Why right. didn't you go hit the guy with the pipe?" Charlie, we're detect- I'm a little disappointed. Yeah, we're, sure. detect- we're Pinkertons. You're not a team player. Uh, Your buddies needed you to kill a guy with a pipe, and you back down. So they told him he was blacklisted from future murder cases. Okay, <laughs> okay, sure. And he was like, "That's totally cool. Right, I'm fine with that." A little while later, two detectives were beating up a man in the office trying to get him to confess to a crime that he didn't commit, and we know he didn't commit them because the two detectives had committed the crime. Interesting dynamic for that. <laughs> I mean, that you, you, not enough times are we seeing stuff like that where you, know, you are trying to get the confession to save your own ass. Yeah. It's a very it's a conflated. Yeah. Um, so Charlie put a loaded pistol in one of the detectives' faces and told the innocent guy to leave. Go. Uh, after Superintendent Ames told Charlie that he was going to fire him. But before it happened, Superintendent Ames and all the detectives in the office were fired because William Pickerton found out that Ames was stealing per diems from the agency on the side. Well, it's not enough to just rob know, clients blind. He's also stealing per diems from the so agency. So petty. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's stealing like you, printing paper. You can't, you can't fucking trust a criminal. I know. It's weird. Charlie ended up being the only guy in the office who was not fired. So James McParland uh, came. Now, you remember James McParland. Do you remember the Molly Maguire's episode? You probably don't. Nope. Um, So he is a guy who uh, infiltrated the Molly Maguire's and took them down during their strike. Oh, okay. Right, right. Yeah. So he's a piece of shit. Right. Um, He became the new supervisor. And he sent Charlie to Fair Play, Colorado to help fix an election. Fair Play. He's like, can you... (laughs) Uh, to help fix an election. There's a wealthy man there who wanted to become a senator. Okay. So he hired the Pinkertons. And on election day, Charlie and another detective were in charge of a precinct. Okay. And so they'd go to saloons, load up a wagon with dudes, take them to vote, then drive them back and give them two bucks. Okay. And some guys just did this all day long. They just repeat cool driving gig. and make a nice cash. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Pinkertons did not favor Republicans or Democrats, just whoever had money. Okay. Nice. So. Yeah. Uh, when he was in Denver, Charlie voted eight times while he was dressed up as a hobo. Ah, uh, that's fun. Uh, for each vote, he got 25 cents from a Democratic money guy, but then he had to give all the money to the Pinkerton agency. <laughs> like, what a weird... Okay. It's just how you made a living, man. God, it's a good thing that we've secured our elections. And, like, you don't... Stuff hey, like may- that doesn't happen. Hey, maybe capitalism has some issues. No. What? It, well, it just seems like there's no. some problems. No. Nothing. Okay, it just seems... What? Nothing. Okay. It's like people take money and then they do stuff. And, yeah, and, and it's it great. It can be bad stuff because yeah. they need money. It's great. Okay. But those are the people you need to put money back into the economy. Duh. What are you dumb? Yeah, but if they're what you're paying people, people will do bad things to get money. Yeah, sure. But then they put that money back into the economy. Okay, I feel like we're not we're not talking on the same sort of level. Okay. So people do people people need to make money and. And sometimes they can't m- make money the way you want them to. And uh-huh. so they, they have to do things that are wrong to uh-huh. make money yeah. just to get by. Yeah, yeah. But then they're putting that back in the economy. That's what makes the economy good. It's voodoo economics. Okay. I get it now. Yeah. Thank you for this talk. Yeah, yeah. In 1887, Charlie infiltrated a gang. Okay. Uh, three Pinkertons had previously tried and they couldn't. They couldn't oh, get in. so he point break them. So Charlie faked that he had a broken leg. Ah, my leg. And, I should join up with you guys. And then they took him in. Ah, man, my leg's so jacked up. And 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 nursed him back to health. Hey, thanks for giving me all those eggs. Classic bad guys. Yeah. Uh, he ended up becoming hey, good. Hey, boss, what do you think we should name him? <laughs> I actually already have a name. It's Charlie. I want to name him Boo Boo. 
Uh, my name's Charlie, not Boo Boo. Hey, Boo Boo. Hi. How you doing, Boo Boo? Guys, I'm worried about Boo Boo. I think he's sick. I laid with Boo Boo last night. He was what? real weird. What are you talking about? You know, I just had his head in my lap. I was trying to get him to purr. I'm uncomfortable. Guys, I think we need to have Boo Boo fixed. I think he's... I think he's horny. <laughs> what? Yeah. He's in heat. <laughs> what are you talking about? He keeps talking about wanting to go out and talk to girls. I think we got to take off his stuff. What are you... I don't what want you... Boo Boo growing up. He's a fucking man. He's my baby Boo Boo and I love him. He's 35. He's all mine and he's a baby boy. All right. All right. Never mind. Let's, we should have named him Charlie. Let's not call him Charlie again because... Not as catchy. Okay. Boo Boo, you want to be named Charlie? Anyway, Charlie ended up uh, Boo -boo. becoming friends with the guys and then having them arrested. But he felt okay. bad. He felt bad about it. Sure, he, cool. he had him arrested and he was like, oh, I feel bad. It's hard going undercover. Yeah. Um, no, but, he's but too then deep. He's all, Donnie brasco Yeah, but all their cases were dismissed, so he felt he felt better. Okay. Uh, next, he investigated a train robbery. Okay. The suspects were named Smith. Uh -huh. So he went and got a job working for a farmer named Smith who lived close by. That's good detective work. Right. They got to be related. Nobody has that name. Hey, are there any, are there any of the Smiths around here? Uh, it's 850. What about that guy with the farm? He's a Smith. Let's go. All right. Quote, Farmer Smith had a pretty black-eyed daughter, and I made love to her. Okay. The girl showed me a letter from her brothers. In the letter, they stated they were going to a certain town in Arizona soon. Oh, and the 1880s definition of made love was flirted. The definition of made love was flirted? Yeah, back then. So, so they just were flirting. He flirted with her. He did he not did, have... He did not put his penis inside there her. There was vagina. no coitus. Okay, no. good. I don't know why you got to be like... He put it right in there, in and out, in and out, in No, he, he didn't. didn't do that. He yeah. didn't do it. He, no. didn't, he didn't put it in and out, in and out, in and out. Stop, 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 stop. David, 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 Dave, Dave, David, Dave, 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 David, David. Charlie had the brothers arrested. Okay. And then the sheriff put Charlie in a cell with the brothers to try to get a confession. Okay. Now, the cell was still splattered with blood because the last guy in there had cut his throat. Sure. Great. And I guess they didn't have sponges or whatever back then. No. So they just left the blood cool. all splattered about. Right. Nice. Quote, one of the Smiths had a bullet wound through the head, which gave out quite an odor that put ah. on the finishing ah. touch of the already foul <laughs> smell in the air. Oh, my God. What? What? The man has a smelly head hole? <laughs> He's got, like, a rotting... Whale head? I mean, yeah. He's got a blowhole? Basically, he had a smelly uh, uh, head hole, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you mind if we cork her? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dan, did my head cork come out? Yeah, I apologize. sorry. You're just leaking yeah, fume. That'll, that'll stink up. The oh, place. it stinks it right Pretty up. Pretty quick. Oh, yeah. To me, it smells good, though, you know? Well, you that's know how it's that your own thing. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. different like it that. It smells great to me. No, to the rest of us, it's a nightmare. Oh, no, it's good. Yeah. It smells like bacon and a little bit of broccoli. No, nah, like in bad ways, but it, no, it's mm -hmm. worse. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so after a few days, he got a confession. Uh, and then, so he wins that fucking, he's killing it. He's right. killing it. Great. So next he heads to Aspen uh, to go undercover as a minor, which didn't go well at first because he was teamed up with another Pinkerton. Um, and that guy was opening a box of, uh, blasting caps with his knife and it, it uh, exploded them. <laughs> okay. And he blew out both eyes and his hands off. Hey, has anyone seen my hands or my eyes or my eyes? Um, the guy begged Charlie to just shoot him in the head right there because he didn't want to live like that. But sure. Charlie didn't. And then and then uh, the guy was sent back east to live with his mom. Oh, my God. Yeah, his mom was like, oh, you got a potato. Oh, this will be easy. <sighs> so it, that's a great time to not have eyes and hands. Oh. 1890. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Honestly, just shoot him. Yeah. I mean, come on. So Charlie infiltrated a gang of ore thieves, found where they kept the ore, and and had them arrested. Oh, I thought you were saying a gang ore thieves. A I gang like, of ore, O R E, ore right, thieves. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so undercover is becoming his thing. Like he's sure. clearly good at going undercover. Right. And then Charlie was sent to Park County because the Lord Mayor of London paid a hundred ninety thousand dollars in cash for the Mudsill Silver Mine, and he thought it might have been salted. Uh, okay. I'm going to explain that to you. Cause yeah. So there's tons of con men. Wherever there's mines, there's fucking loads of con men. That's how sure. it works back then. Um, 
And they would sell worth. Yeah, I run this place. They would sell worthless mines to rich guys. Okay. Right. Okay. So it's like uh, storage war. <laughs> yes, it's exactly like storage a wars. <laughs> it's a little. It's nothing like storage. A wars. little. And not even close. There's some relative. There's some like related qualities. Not even slightly. For sure. Not even in the tiniest. Bit. I'll be honest. I haven't seen storage wars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, holy shit uh, <laughs> so um so they're just standing there like boy you're gonna love this mine right so they, here's how they'd sell it that a common would take ore from another mine and scatter it around the shitty whoa mine. look at this yeah look at all the silver it's basically here. puking it holy moly um some some guys would take a shotgun load it with gold dust and shoot the walls okay wow Wow. And then gold would embed itself into the rock. Um, and then, but then smart. And so guys are catching on to it. So a smart buyer would ask to see what was in the rock. He'd be like, why don't you crack one of them rocks open? So then the con men would go a step further and find a crack and put gold, put dynamite into the gold and then blow it up in there and then put gold in the dynamite cap. Oh, put the dynamite cap smart. into a crack right. and then blow it up. Whoa, then, look at that gold. Yeah, it's yeah. in there. Jeez. Um, that would salt the interior. But some smart buyers would bring a geologist. Um, so there was also bichloride of gold, which is liquid. It was used as medicine and passed through the body. So a guy could drink it and then piss a crack, piss in a crack in a mine. And so he'd piss in there and then gold would go in the. A guy, this is to con people. Guys would drink gold and then piss gold. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. What? That's exactly what I'm talking you about. You can piss gold? Yeah, we should do it. We should this weekend. Well. How long until Kanye West pisses gold? <laughs> God, all I want to do is pee gold now. So entire Can I do that now? Yeah, is sure. Is that possible? Some bichlor I don't it's probably horrible for you, but you know. Oh well, I mean now I'm less sold. Entire towns would be in on the scam as they'd all make money from some rich guy buying a mine. Sure. So Charlie eventually learned all about the mine salting operation in this town, which helped the Lord Mayor recover all his money. Okay. So he's fucking good at his job. Right. Charlie's great. Um August eighteen eighty nine, Mammy was di uh, diagnosed with pleurisy. You mean she can't make things sound singular? She can't, yeah. <sighs> Cats. I love seas. That kind of stuff. Yeah. I ate all the dinners, and I love all the worlds. <laughs> okay. We should take you to the doctor, because you're sounding... To like the doctors. Pleurisy. Doctors. Well, there's one. I have diseases. Okay. I need yeah. help. Okay. With everything. Yes. All it is is... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's go to the doctor. Doctors. I'm okay. Yes, is. So actually, what it is is it's like a an inflammation of the uh, of like a layer. Well, you drink a gold around your lungs. It's an it's a layer of infection. It's like around an your inflammation lungs? of the. Okay. Of a, I can't. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's like sure. there's a layer around your lungs and it gets inflamed. I'm still thinking die, about pissing gold. You can so die it from really it. You, you say things twice. Um. So her father wanted her to her to go back to Missouri where he lived for an operation. So Charlie sent um, Mammy, his wife and daughter off. Okay. Charlie was then assigned to learn who had blown up two wealthy mine owners in Nevada. Blown up the mine owners? Yeah. They blew up the people who own the mine? Okay, so there's two mine owners and someone rigged bombs under their beds during the night. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> quote, Mr. Pelling and his mattress... Went up through the roof. I love that story, Mr. Pelling and his mattress. And landed right side up with care in the middle of the street. Oh! He was still wrapped in the quilts and blankets. Hey, what did I eat? I bet the shock put him out of business for a while, but okay. otherwise he was not hurt. Okay. Not so lucky was Mr. Prince. He was badly used up, but soon recovered. He too was blown out into the street, but not on the feather bed. Okay. So one landed on his bed. One didn't. That's right. And... <laughs> That's and anything's anyway, possible. He lived in a cartoon. I don't know. Yeah, for sure. That. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Charlie befriended the suspect, then talked him into heading out into the country to prospect for gold together. Okay. So this guy he thinks did it. 
and he's like hey, he befriends him yeah. and he's like what do you say we go on a couple of bros going to gold uh, prospecting mission what do you sure, think sure I think that's great you, I, I can like drink you. gold I like you I like you let's go prospecting let's prospecting me and you gonna you find and some me gold you gonna look for gold there's Charlie oh uh, that's Charlie and that guy that's just Charlie I, you know what the, uh, the other guy might have been in that picture but he was in a out. horse um, so so they're out there for nine months fun and the guy finally spills it. He finally says what he did because he thinks this guy's his bro. Yeah. Um. So he he guy got arrested. Then word came. And he comes back. He finds out that Mammy's operation not worked. Not worked. Uh, huh? The pleurisy spread to both lungs. She is terminal. It's in my lungs. Uh, so Mammy and and little Viola, their daughter, returned from Missouri. A, an aunt was sent to care for her as well. Okay. Um. And then she died in Charlie's arms. Oh. Yeah. Sad. sad. The aunt then Bobo's lady died. <laughs> the aunt then begged to take Viola to take his daughter. Okay. And he was like, "Why? Well, I, I don't. He there's no. I don't know what to do." So he let the aunt take his daughter. Sure. No, that's love. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, he didn't know what to do with her because he's like, "How do I do this?" How do you do, daughter? Um. So he said goodbye to his daughter, and then miracle of miracles, he got smallpox again, which is impossible. Oh, but he says he did. Okay, so it's either, impossible. So yeah, you can't get smallpox twice. So oh. either he didn't have it the first time, and he had something else that was really bad, or he got it this time. This time it sounds like he had smallpox. Okay, perhaps it was a similar type of virus. We I don't know, but medium pox. It, it wasn't good. Quote: I had always heard that a person couldn't take smallpox more than once, but I know better now. He broke out with sores, head to foot, and quote swelled up like a Chicago alderman. Uh huh. So I guess. Local, bloated? local Chicago politicians are bloated. Okay. Uh, a doctor came to check on him and said he'd be dead in the morning. Thanks for coming by. <laughs> <laughs> Enough medical mumbo jumbo, Doc. What is it? You're dead. You're gonna die. You're dying. You're dead. Shoot Goodbye. Shoot straight, Doc. You're fucked. You're fucked. You're... Do you know what fucked is? What are my chances? No, you, you're fucked. You're like you're fucked. There's no chance. You're gone. Any experimental procedures you want to use on me? No, just get out. You smell. It's awful. Think you're, I'm gonna be one of those ones that prayer does it for? How, how are you even talking? It's ho- horrible. It you're burns because I have the pox on my towel, ta- my tongue. I don't like you. Quote: I was swelled up like. Can I get another round of ice? Quote: I was swelled up like a barrel, and every inch of my body, even to the soles of my feet and the inside of my throat was covered with sores. Oh my God. In lying so long on my back, these sores had become calloused, but on undertaking to turn over onto the fresh sores, so as to try to get up, I would scream with pain and fall over on my back again. Uh, uh. Towards morning, I could hardly get my breath and I was suffering the torments of hell. Then for the first time, I realized the satisfaction of being buried by loving hands and having flowers strewn on our graves. And when my cry was over, my teeth were set and I made up my mind not to die. I was determined to fight off death with all the energy left in me. Wow. And when the doctor came the next morning, he was still alive. Jesus. And the doctor we like, already booked the bed. <laughs> He'd beaten the fever and he was safe. Wow. And then he decided he liked New Mexico. He's like, I actually like this place. Sure. Um, it takes smallpox to appreciate. Yeah, it. it really does. They said that's their slogan. Yeah. Um, and so this is where he said he wanted to build a home. And in 1891, Charlie was assigned to go undercover as a miner in Coeur d'Alene, which is in Idaho. It's like the t- top part of Idaho. Yeah, uh, it's beautiful. It's, uh, where they keep the white supremacists. Mm-hmm. Trouble with the miners. Right? Yeah. Okay. There's a lot up there. Trouble with the miners uh, was brewing up there, right? And this is where my family is at that time. Okay. Um, and uh, and the owners, mine owners, wanted to get a spy inside. The, the union they're having trouble Charlie refused because his quote sympathy was with the labor organizations as against capital sure so he's one of these commie types weirdo his boss came back a month later and said pretty please and Charlie was like okay hi I, I mean how many morals can a guy have all right um, the Coeur d'Alene area had a few mining camps uh, the toughest one so the toughest place is Gem which is a city now a ghost town up there that is Gem, Idaho. Uh, that's where Charlie went. Uh, about 500 miners working three mines. Only the mine superintendent knew who Charlie was. Everyone else did not know. Okay. He joined the Gem Miners Union and soon was elected recording secretary of the union. Because who wants that fucking job? Recording secretary? Yeah, writing everything oh, okay. down. Okay. I thought he made the album for the group. 
And then he got himself fired from the mine okay. on purpose so he could have more time for spying. And he just told all the other union guys that he had a rich dad who sent him money. Okay. Do you see any problem with that plan? Well, he's trying to infiltrate. Well, if you're a miner, why would you have a rich dad who would send you money? Why are you there in the fucking first place? <laughs> I mean, yeah, in my head it was like he was trying it. <laughs> like he was like a rich boy who was like, well, it didn't take. It turns out my hands don't like a callus. Anyway, I figured I'll just sit here and buy the boys beer when they come back. So he joins this union group. He joins these dudes who are bad. Who are bad union guys, I guess. That's what he says. Okay. Um. Anyway, here's some here's some Idaho. There's some miners. That's what mm. they look like. Um. So they. Yeah, one dude's got a hell of a pipe. So they were threatening men who wouldn't join the union, right? Okay. It it. it if, if it didn't work, threatening them, they would form a mob to scare the shit out of the scab. And sometimes a dozen scabs, their wives and kids, would be driven out all at once of the town. Okay. And they would shoot guns over their head as they left. Nice. Make, call making a point. Right. Yeah. Right? We still make that point. Charlie found the leaders of the Coeur d'Alene unions to be, quote, a vicious, heartless gang of anarchists. Okay. This caused Charlie to change his mind about miners' unions. Okay. He regularly sent reports to the Pinkerton agency. Charlie also bought uh, a building in town and started a small store with a Miss Kate Shipley, who had a five-year-old boy. Charlie lived in the room upstairs. She lived in the room downstairs. Mm -hmm. There's nothing happening. Well, I know hey, of. I'm just saying, I sometimes it's late. Oh, girl. Things happen. He built a fence out Arts back. move. Built a tall fence out back and left one board loose just in case there was trouble. Nice. And uh, in the spring of 1892, a strike was declared throughout the region. Um, the miner, the mines were closed for business. And Charlie learned the unions had picked the worst men in the unions to scare the shit out of the scabs. Scabs rarely then would venture away from the mine. Um, that's where they lived. Their quarters were at the mine. They stayed at the mine. Okay. But when they did, they were basically beating the shit out of almost to death. Right? Okay. So Charlie recorded everything discussed in the union meetings, and some members began to suspect Charlie might be a Pinkerton. Uh -oh. One warned him to leave town or he'd be killed. So Charlie didn't leave. He kept his gun and his Bowie knife close. Plus he, he's got that fence loop. <clears throat> he's got the fence. Never get about, do not forget about the fence. The that's best defense is a hole in the fence. Fence plan. Yeah. That's the whole, that's the whole time he's thinking. I, I, I got this. I got fence a, gate. I got a fence hole. Gate gate. Um, he learned that two scabs at the gem mine were going to be murdered, and he went to warn them. So they're at a saloon in the town or something. He goes uh, to warn them, but then he gets out. And Is sees, you from the future, mister? He sees, <laughs> he sees a big crowd is formed in the street. Okay. And old shoemaker Robinson told him to get out quick. Okay. Um, but the crowd saw Charlie and circled around him. Okay. And then he had a, he pulled out his gun, and he slowly backed across the street, pointing at his gun at everybody, and then he went into the building that he lives in. Okay. Um, but he still wanted to warn the two scab guys, so he climbed, he goes up to his room, and then he climbed down an emergency ladder. He kept out back, and then he went through his loose fence board. Nice, so right? it does work. Plans fucking coming yeah. together. This is like listening to an episode of Miami Vice or something. Absolutely. Where, yeah. And he crawled through a swamp to the river, and then he crawled on his stomach past two guards on the bridge, and he finally warned the superintendent. And then they sent men down to get the scabs, but they had already had the shit beat out of him. They were still alive. Oh, that's cool. But they That's uh, a fun story. I bet he's glad he did all that. Quote, one of them was beaten almost into a jelly. Oh, <laughs> my God. What the – what just – there are sometimes where things are said on this podcast that I just cannot – you can't the jelly. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you had any bread, it's fine. But without bread, it's weird. You know what I mean? Did you guys hear? Dan got made into a jam. Oh, toast! Is there toast? Oh, look at the preserves. Uh, those are uh, those are pieces of bone. Oh, that's Bob. Yeah. Wow. He yes. is delicious. Well, Bob sort of took into a more hummus form. Oh, yeah. Look at that. All right. Oh, hey, was that? that was me. It came from out of my throat. He was beaten almost into a jelly, his jaw and Jesus. several ribs being broken. In fact, he lost all resemblance to a human being. Oh, my God. Except in shape. Oh, my God. Dave, his no. face was one mass of bruised and bloody flesh. OK, that sounds like Trump. <laughs> Charlie stayed in the store that night. Obviously, I wouldn't leave my place at that point either. No. 
Uh, Mrs. Shipley learned the mob was going to start it up again before daylight. There were now over a thousand Union men who had come from all over the district, and they were in town, and they were ready to riot. 300 armed guards and non-Union miners were at the mines. Charlie was then positively ID'd by Black Jack Griffith. He was one of the guys who had blown up the two mine owners while they were sleeping on their uh, mattresses. Okay. So oh. he IDs, he right. goes, that guy's a Pinkerton. So then 50 men waited outside the store with rifles. Uh-oh, it's jelly time. Yeah, it's jelly. <laughs> Charlie went to Miss Shipley's room <clears throat> and sawed a hole in the floor. I mean, he's real old-timey. He is not a cartoon. <laughs> We established that he isn't animated. Yeah, he's definitely not. Okay, a, he's definitely sure. he's definitely real. He's a real person. Okay. Although there is a one coming up later where he he has a hole and he takes it off a tree and he throws it on the ground and he goes. Oh uh, wait a minute! But that's that's an old. He escape. does sound Buster Keatony. It's an old escape uh, plan. I yeah, left a hole in the fence. So he said goodbye to Miss Shipley and then he dropped out, uh, dropped down, out of the out of the room, out of the through room, the, and the she floor. pulled the trunk over the hole. I've done and, that. And then what? Huh? Uh, so um, then the miners blew up the Frisco Mill. Okay. That's it right there. Sure. Um, and they headed down to burn. Their plan was to burn Charlie at the stake to make an example of Pinkerton's. Right. Great. Mm. Um, he was still hiding under the store. Okay. He heard the mob rush in. Oh, my God. And then he crawled out and under the wooden sidewalks. He's so just inglorious bastards <laughs> like he's living that existence. <laughs> so he he just crawls under the wooden sidewalks all the way to the edge <laughs> of the town. Um, what is that? What? Nobody else is thinking that? And then he got in like a, I don't know what it's called, like a water flute or shoot or whatever it is where the water, water slide no that's not a water slide please it's like a water slide it's it very was much one? like a water slide if is you've it ever one? seen the apple dumpling first gang. water slide have you seen the apple dumpling gang i'm gonna go and so he's in that and he goes down that and guys shoot at him did they get a picture of his face when he was at the end that and he could then, buy at the shop and then he gets out and he runs across a 200 yards of open land okay. to the gem mine okay tells those guys what's going on okay they were, and the. It turns out that he had found out that the miners were going to take a a train car and roll it from up above the mine down to the mine to try to blow it up. Wow! And then he somehow made a thing that would direct it in another way. So he spoiled that plan. Like Superman, he flew around the earth till he reversed time. And then, and then they, yeah, he flew back, yeah. And then they really wanted to kill him. So him, him and another guy that they also wanted to kill ran up the hill and ran away and went to Spokane, Washington. Okay. So it's a good story. Yeah, no, it's normal. Yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's what it was like back then. Yeah. So then the government came in. All Coeur d'Alene was put under martial law. Charlie was appointed a U.S. deputy marshal, and he supervised soldiers on a roundup of uh, Union men. And they put 300 Union men in a temporary wooden prison. Uh, Charlie became a star witness against all the leaders. The trial lasted four weeks. Eight teams were convicted. But he regretted working against some because he was like, I, like, I still like Union guys. Okay. But uh, he never forgave the unions for what happened in Idaho. Charlie also did not believe in their cause. Now, here's the deal. The miners were demanding shorter hours and that everyone received $3.50 a day. Okay. Everyone. Quote, the same wages as skilled miners. So he was basically like, that's fucked up. That they want guys who aren't skilled miners to also make the same amount of money as them. Right. He wants a scale. He wants a scale. And the miners are like, everyone should get paid for their fucking time. Time is money. Why can't everybody have the same value for their time? And, and Charlie was like, no, you have a skill. You should get paid more. Okay. You fucking animals. Um, Charlie's world is worse. So, uh, he ended up uh, afterwards going to Denver. He had a bunch of money from the job had been a year over a year. So right. he had a bunch of money saved up. And then Miss Sharpling wrote and said that this, that they burned down the store. Oh, that's cool. So he was out three grand. The, Fun. Yeah. It's all at, falling at, apart. At 38, he met a new lady in 1893, Lily, uh, Lily Thomas. She's 21. Okay. So he's moving up. Yeah. Right? No, he's at a legal age. That's great. Uh, they married quickly. I had a son three years later. And What's then, quickly for him? In an hour? Uh, maybe five days. Okay. Um, and then the marriage uh, was over as soon as the kid was born. Sure. 
Uh, Charlie was then offered a supervisor position by the Pinkerton agency, but he turned it down. Quote, I knew my conscience would not allow me to act as a superintendent of the agency in a big city where so much dirty would be expected of me. Yet he works for them and does fucking dirty. He's all. Can we stop saying dirty like that? He's all fucking dirty. Stop it, bro. No, no, no. There's so much dirt happening. No. Um, here's a picture of a blown up mine. If you want to see that. Sure. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. It's just what I'd imagine. Right. So that's uh, a lot of retirement wood. Uh, so Colorado. That's pension pine. Colorado mine strikes happen, which we've talked about in another uh, episode of the dollop. Yeah. Online. In Colorado. Yep. Yeah. Unlike the Coeur d'Alene situation, Charlie didn't feel good about infiltrating, striking coal miners to inform on, on them. Quote, I considered their cause a just one as men who take their lives into their own hands every time they enter a coal mine should be paid double the money which they receive. Therefore, I hated to report their threats against the greedy corporation which treated them as slaves. But he did. Nice. He really... <laughs> I mean, is he just fooling himself? Yeah, I think he's just fucking... He just says he's that... Just, he's literally... He's the guy throughout history who, like, takes the orders at My Lai and kills the Vietnamese. Right. And he goes, I, I feel bad. Oh, terrible. My heart goes out to you. Now let me get your hearts out of you. In 1904, Charlie bought a Russian wolfhound puppy. He named it Jimmy Longlegs. Hi, you're a dog, and I'm going to call you Jimmy Longlegs. <laughs> that's not it, but that's what they look like. A good looking dog. Oh, it's yeah, a real Jimmy Long Legs. Um, well, because it's like a lassie hot dog foot, so it has long legs. You can see how it got the name, yeah. But after the dog, more ate, like Harry Humpless Camel. After the dog ate a whole duck in front of him, he changed his name to Eat Him Up Jake. Oh my god, wait. <laughs> so it went from Long Legs Jimmy, and then the dog ate a whole duck, and he became Eat Him Up Jake. Yeah. Okay. Hey, that Long Legs Jimmy. <laughs> no, I changed his name because he ate a whole duck. Um, Eat Him Up Jake. Charlie's daughter, Viola, graduated from college and spent two weeks at Charlie's ranch. Getting to know each other. Hi, yeah, yeah. You? you abandoned me. Yeah, yeah. I blah, blah, blah. You. This is Eat Him Up Jake. Charlie's mom was living in Kansas. Uh uh, at the 1904 Old Settlers Meeting in Caldwell, Kansas, she got the prize for the, quote, lady having been a widow greatest number of years. Boy, that's a, it's just yep. nice to be nominated. It went, though, to, isn't it? it went to Bridget Seringo. Her 49 years of widowhood earned her $5. That's awesome. Isn't that great? What an honor. I mean, this story has a happy ending. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. In 1906, Charlie went back to Coeur d'Alene. Some of the union leaders he had betrayed were on trial for the murder of the ex-governor of Ohio. The Pinkertons were involved in catching the men and guarding duties during the trial. All the men were acquitted, though. Charlie thought the agency didn't do as much as they could have to win the case. Quote, the Pinkertons just grafted the state of Ohio out of thousands of dollars by putting extra operatives to work on the case where there was none, no need. The, the fucking Pinkertons are the first awful American corporation, it sounds like. That's great. Just grafting, nice to be first, just yeah. fucking grafting and taking money everywhere. Um, after the trial, Charlie resigned from the Pickerton agency and went to live at his ranch in Santa Fe, New Mexico. He was done. Uh, but he had what he called a dark blot on his conscience from working against the coal miners in Colorado. Okay. Not against the other guys, but the coal miners. Sure, yeah. Um, quote, these men and their families are treated as slaves by the greedy corporations who own the mines. I know it to be a fact that the Colorado Fuel and Iron Company and the Victor Fuel Company of Colorado virtually own the sheriffs and other court officials in the southern part of the state. Mm. So I guess I like this kind of guy. That's the Colorado Fuel and Iron Company. But this kind of. Yeah. So he f now he feels bad because he's looking at his life and he's like, oh, I fucked over tons of working men. Right. So I don't. Like, yeah. Fuck well, him. yeah, that's fine. You're allowed to. That's that's the easy way to do it. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. The hard Deathbed way. Deathbed conscience. The hard way is to go find another job and not do that. Yeah. Uh, of fuel of Colorado fuel and iron. Quote. I became personally acquainted with the president of the company, Mr. Keebler. And he told me. That I actually have a <laughs> group of elves that well, I don't want to. I'm starting a couple businesses, but this is the one I'm focused on now. But uh, I'm opening another factory in a tree, let's say. Wait, you're opening a factory in a tree? 
It doesn't sound like the space would accommodate, but believe me, it's plenty. I'm not sure I understand anything. Um, I probably have said too much, but I'm excited. Elves? Mm. Uh, Do you like biscuits with fudge? Mr. Keebler told me that the secret of his company is elves in downing the unions was the mixing of nationalities in the coal camps. Hmm. Hello. That the unions cannot hold peoples from different countries together into a solid mass. Right. Yeah, it is. So it, that is true. You know that thing when people say uh, they're evil, they're doing this thing on purpose. It's a master plan. It's a, that's actually what they well, were you're doing. the people who say it. Charlie married again in 1907 and divorced again in 1909. Okay. <laughs> I just left. I just went through that one fast. Cause sure. I, yeah. His mom came to live with him, but then she died in 1911. In 1913, at 58 years old, Charlie reunited with Helen Partain. She was the widow of a rancher he had worked for 40 years before. Okay. They were married in Hot Springs, Arkansas, and the wedding got a front page headline. Quote, old couple is married here. Great. Well, I want to read more. That's for sure. A, a read more. <laughs> Old couple married here. Uh, so Eat him up, Jake. Devours again. There's older Charlie. Hello. Um, silver fox with a silver pistol. The article said, quote, the groom led a life of adventure and the bride is pretty for one of 51 years of age. Now, it's crazy when people say that there's a double standard because I think that's pretty clear that uh, everybody's held to the, you know, everybody, you know, you're just judging people in the same. Thing. He's had a great life and my God, her face isn't horrible. Well, this man's had quite an adventurous life and you got to see the legs on the dame. They moved to Santa Fe. The marriage lasted less than a year. Nice. To clear his Is this the man who invented divorce? Yeah. To clear his conscience, Charlie uh, started writing books again. Okay. Uh, he wrote... How Pink to marry eight women quick. He wrote Pinkerton's Detective Cowboy, which... There we go. Mm. Um, it's uh, about his time with the agency. The Pinkertons sued him to stop the publication and tied him up in court for two years. He was eventually able to publish it, but he had to change the name, and the title became, you can see the title down there, uh, The Cowboy Detective, a true story of 22 years with a world-famous detective agency giving the inside facts of the bloody Coeur d'Alene labor riots and the many ups and downs of the author throughout the United States, Alaska, British Columbia, and Old Mexico. Also exciting scenes among the moonshiners of Kentucky and Virginia. Anyway, that's the title. That's the working title. No, that's the title. That's what I'm going with. It's catchy. Is it? Is it? Is too it little? too short? Yeah, it is. I'm just gonna be on it. Yeah, it is. It's, it's not too, enough. Right? It's too short. Okay. It's too short. What about Mar also married a bunch? I think you want it even more. Dog owner. How about this? The dog owner. Dog who eat. Owner eat him up, dog. Jake. Eat him up, a dog. Formerly long leg Jerry. Mm. Eat him up, Jake. Duck eater. Duck eater. Yeah. Dog had smallpox in my throat one time, hard to swallow. A Doc double, said I'd be double, dead. Double smallpox guy. My wife died of making things plural. Right. Anyway, that's the title. All right, great. I think it's good. Yeah. Um, the legal fight almost bankrupted him uh, over the book, but he was not deterred. He wrote another book, Two Evil Isms: Pinkertonism and Anarchism, by a cowboy detective who knows. Yeah, the <laughs> cowboy detective. I guess I didn't get that one. Hey, it's all right. Um, uh, oh, there's more. Sorry. Two evil isms, Pinkertonism and anarchism by a cowboy detective who knows as he spent 22 years of the inner circle of Pinkerton's National Detective Agency. What's up with the titles? Honestly, it, um, just unable to. You want to get you want an eye catcher. You want an eye catcher. Yeah. You know what's inside. Yeah. Right. You want to get them once they read the cover, they'll have read the first chapter. Like these are some of these are shorter than a trailer to a movie. But for sure. But it's the same sort of idea. Right. OK, great. Um, Pinkerton sued him about this book, the second book and won. Okay. Um, so Charlie was forced to turn over all copies, uh, but then he just printed it himself. Sure. Pinkerton tried to uh, steal or buy up all the copies of the book or destroy them. Uh, the agency tried to have Charlie prosecuted for libel, but the New Mexico governor denied his extradition. Okay. 
From 1916 to 1918, Charlie worked as a ranger for New Mexico, helping catch cattle rustlers. He wrote and published more books, some autobiographical, one about Billy the Kid. He became known as an author, right? Sure. He's, he's like the first Western author. Nice. Pinkerton Agency kept intimidating publishers to halt his publication, so he didn't make very much money. At some point, he wrote a fan letter to actor William Hart, who okay. was a big fan. He was a big um, silent movie guy. He was like the Western star of silent movies. Okay. Hart responded as he'd heard of Charlie through his writings, and the two men became friends. And in 1922, Charlie came down with chronic bronchitis. Health and financial problems forced him to leave Santa Fe. Okay. He moved to San Diego to live with his daughter and now 14-year-old granddaughter. And they nursed him back to health, and then he moved to Los Angeles, where William Hart Became an actor. Yep. No. Got work as a consultant uh, on at least one Western movie and gave him bit parts in movies to earn wow. some Eden money. Wow. Wow. He hung out in a tavern called The Watering Hole, which was a favorite hangout for actors. Charlie died at his son Leroy's house in Altadena, California, on October 18th, 1928, which wow. is right next to where I live. So um, are you him? I'm him. This, that's the end of the story. I, I knew am it. Charlie Seringo. I knew it. And I've been infiltrating the dollop for over four years. You're Pinkerton. Yeah. And I've been sending reports to Pinkerton. About me? And you're a fucking socialist. What? Commie. No. Piece of shit. Nuh uh. And I love money. I love money. This actually does sound like you. <laughs> That's how you sound. Oh, look, there's another picture of him uh, with the dog. Oh, eat him up, Jake. Eat him up, Jake. Eat, eat him up, up Jake. Jake. Eat him up, Jake. Uh, wow. All right. Well, we have ourselves a. That was just a. The do first Donnie Brasco. Yeah, Is yeah, Is that the yeah. title? I mean, but, I mean. The, the, I learned a lot about storage wars. But these fucking people who go through, who, who are in history, who do evil deeds, and then feel bad about it and write a book, can go fuck themselves. Don't do the fucking evil deed. We don't even get books anymore. Yeah, that's you know? true. We're, we're past the apology part. Yeah. But, yeah, I think that, yeah. I don't give a shit no. that you feel bad that you did that. No, you don't need do to it. have a moral compass in the moment. You know what? Yeah. And the Pinkertons were animals. I love you. I love you. Let me see. What are you doing to your eyes? I'm making a baby, I think. Oh, my God. Is this how you do it? No. You rub your eyes? No. Oh. <laughs> so many. I'm not sure about biology. Uh, let's, okay, this has gone on long enough. Um. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. You got anything else to say? Any wrap check ups? Out, any check out uh, doll, Dollop Podcast. Oh, are we? Dot com. Oh, yeah. Go. Tours. Uh, you know, we're going to be in uh, Denver and uh, Salt Lake All City. All the cities that Charlie July. went to. We'll be there in July. Yeah. Um, and then after that, we're in Minneapolis. Wow. And Imagine us Cleveland in Minneapolis. And Nashville. Um, wow. There's a couple more that are going to be announced. Yeah. Boston Boise will be Boston. rescheduled. Boston's happening. Uh, DC. Chicago. Has Chicago been announced? I don't yeah, think Chicago's so. Chicago's been announced. Has it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, whatever. I think it's, it's all coming. Out. Yeah. Um, um, so there's not going to be any second shows because um, a lot of people are like, second show, but the that that killed me last tour, so it's one show. And I wanted to do three, so Dave's been a real jerk about it. Yeah, because Gareth doesn't do anything. That's not true. Someone what has to get fries ooh, for the green room. <laughs> okay. Jerky. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you. I miss you already. And this next time soon. It's done. <laughs>